We're glad you're here today, Cross Community Church, all around the world. Let's stand and let's sing that as we stand in God's love, we have nothing to fear. When darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own, when brokenness and pain is all I know, oh, I won't be shaken, oh, I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance. When I stand in your love Will she no longer have a place to hide And I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind Oh, I won't Good morning. We want to welcome you to Cross Community Church. We're so glad that you're with us this morning. If this is your first time joining us online, we want to say a special welcome to you as well. And then we want to encourage everyone, whether this is your first time with us or you're here all the time, to go ahead and go to our website, c3naz.net. And right there in the middle of the homepage, you'll be able to click on our digital connect card. If you fill that out, it not only lets us know that you were here for church this morning, but there's a place for you to leave comments and prayer requests as well. So take advantage of that. We'll leave a link to that in the comments there on Facebook. And then we want to take just a minute to talk about a few things that are happening in the life of our church this week and in the weeks to come. Uh, first thing we want to let you know about is that next Sunday, 
October the 1st is going to be our Alabaster Offering Sunday. And if you're not familiar with Alabaster, it's just one way for us to participate in what God is doing around the world as we help missionaries and work in witness teams, uh, giving to them in the ways that they're able to build schools and churches and medical facilities and all those kinds of things. And so we want to invite you to participate in this and to be a part of this. And there's a couple ways that you can do that. Um, first, if you got one of these boxes at one of our outdoor live services, you can bring that back next Sunday, um, October the 4th. And we'll take that back and make sure that that gets to World Missions. Or you can go to our website, c3naz.net, and then you'll be able to go to our online giving feature. And right there, there's a designation for Alabaster Offering, and you can give safely and securely there as well. But however you choose to give to Alabaster, we want to say thank you for doing that and helping in the spreading of the message of Jesus around the world. We also just want to take a minute this morning to celebrate. Uh, Pastor Jeff was able to share some really exciting news with us last week and letting us know that as of October the 1st, uh, we are going to be able to pay off the church mortgage on our building here. And so, um, as you know, that's something that we've been working on for a long, long time. This is one of our 10 four vision goals. And so, obviously, we're really excited about being able to do that and being able to put some of those resources into ministry going forward. And so, what we want to invite you to do this morning is to save Sunday, October 25th, on your calendars um, as an opportunity to come together that Sunday. We'll have our normal worship service here. And then at the end, we'll be burning the mortgage together as a way to celebrate God's faithfulness and the ability to accomplish this goal in the way that God has helped us do that. So save October 25th, that Sunday for that, as we celebrate this uh, really amazing thing that God has allowed us to do in even this really challenging season that we're in. Uh, but this morning, we're really excited about the service that we have ahead of us as we continue in our Sermon on the Mount series with Pastor Jeff. So go ahead and greet those that are with you there in your homes, and let's continue in our worship. We're so glad that you've chosen to be with Cross Community this morning. And we'll sing the song that gathers us back. Hallelujah, I belong here in his presence. I see hope coming on the horizon. There's no need for hiding, cause I belong and you belong. Hallelujah, you belong here in his presence, safe and secure. We see hope. Coming on the horizon, there's no need for hiding, cause you belong. Psalm 25, 1 through 9. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways, According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his ways. Amen. We have a God who is mighty to save. Would you raise your voices in your homes around the world? You sing along with the call as she leads us. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior. Oh, but 
mighty God that we who is powerful to save that we're now going to go to in prayer and we have a lot of things to be praying about speaking of a God who saves I want to let you know Owen Blau called me Monday night uh, to tell me some bittersweet news the good news was that his aunt who's been in the hospital and who we've been praying for struggling with lung cancer Uh, She prayed to accept Jesus as her savior. The sad part of it is that she lost her battle with cancer uh, shortly thereafter. And so they will be preparing funeral services uh, coming up. So we celebrate that she is alive with Jesus right now. And yet we mourn her loss. And uh, we want to be praying for the Blau family. We also want to remember Joni Garisco. She fell and she has no, nothing broken, but she's not able to get around right now. So we want to pray that God will help her as she has to be still and know that he is God. 
Uh, we want to continue uh, praying for the pastor at the Greenville, Michigan Church of the Nazarene. They were in a horrific car accident on their way home from vacation. Uh, the pastor's parents were both killed. Her husband uh, was injured, and they're going to have some very substantial medical bills due to having to life flight uh, three people out of there. And so we want to keep them in our prayers. And if you feel led to give towards that, you can do that at our, our district website. That's minas.org. That's michigannas.org, minas.org. Uh, we want to continue to pray for Carol McCartney. She's home, but still recovering. We want to continue praying for Gay Garza's dad, still in the hospital, recovering. Michelle Jimenez's mom is home from surgery, but still recovering. And of course, we want to remember our first responders and our teachers during this time. So let's go to this God who saves. Let's go to him now in prayer uh, and bring our requests. Father, we come to you in this crazy year that, that is called 2020. There have been so many things that were unexpected. A virus, earthquakes, wildfires, hurricane after hurricane after hurricane. In fact, there's still one going on right now. And so we pray, God, help us. We need to know your saving power. We need to hear and experience the truth of this song in our world, in our nation, in our state, in our local city and community. We need you, Lord Jesus. And so we come in Jesus' name to worship, to sing, to pray, and now to do as Scripture encourages us to do, which is to bring our requests to you all our cares and anxieties to place them upon you because you care for us. We're so grateful that you welcome us in just as we are. And you invite us to bring all that is troubling us, all that we are, and lay it at your feet. And you will bring all that you are and all the resources that you have available. Jesus, you will bring those to bear in our situations. And so we bring to you our brother Owen and his family with this bittersweet news, the great news that we are never beyond. That last moment we can accept you and know that when we breathe our last, we are in your presence. So we're grateful that you were able to rescue Owen's aunt. And we ask now that you would be with them as they grieve her loss. Pray that you would be in all the details of getting everything ready for a funeral service. We pray your blessing upon the Blau family. We lift up to you our sister, the pastor at the Greenville Church. We pray that you would touch her family. Pray that you would help her as she grieves the loss of her mom and her dad. And at the same time, experiences the joy of knowing that her sister and husband are still okay and she was unhurt. But God, we know they have a long road of recovery. We know they'll have some financial obligations. And so we pray, God, that you would bless and help them. Pray that their church community would gather around them and just shower them with love and affection and blessing and help and help us to be a part of that as well. God, we're grateful that you were with Carol when she was in the hospital and having surgery, and we pray you would continue to bless her as she recovers. We pray for Gay Garza's dad and pray your healing touch would be upon him in the hospital, and we're grateful for Michelle Jimenez's mom and her recovery. Continue to heal her, we pray. God, there are so many who are sick in our world right now, so we pray that you would begin to heal from this virus. We pray that you would give wisdom to the scientists who are feverishly working towards a vaccine. We pray, God, that you would enable them to find that. We pray that you would help those who are sick with the virus now to be healed, to be touched by your hand. We pray, God, that 
this season that seems so crazy would turn our hearts to you, the only one who can save. Father, we are grateful for those first responders who are battling wildfires on the West Coast, who are helping recover from floods and hurricanes. We pray that you would protect them. We pray for those ones who are helping right here in our community, our EMTs, our firefighters, our police officers, our doctors and nurses and and technicians. We just pray that you would use them effectively to bring healing and help to those in our community. God, we lift up to you our teachers again who are a month in, and we just say thank you that in our local communities there has not been an outbreak that has closed our schools. We pray that would, that would continue, Father. Pray that you would be with the teachers of our community, for Melanie and Alicia, for Karen and Paul, Sherry, Kristen and Andy. God, bless them and help them as they go into schools or are online and, and teaching our children. Help them, bless them, and protect them, we pray. Now, Father, we want to worship you through giving our tithes and offerings. We pray that you would take what we would give and use it to bless missionaries around the world. Pray that it would be used to bless our local community. Pray that you would continue to use it as you have been faithful and helped us to pay off this great mortgage debt. That now that money that we give would be invested into our community, would be invested into building up children and teenagers and adults into disciples of Jesus that will be sent out into our world to declare the good news. Help us to give and to give generously. Remind us this is our testimony. We are trusting you for life, not our bank accounts. And so it is in your name that we give. It is in your name that we worship It is in your name that we pray, the name of Jesus, our God who is mighty to save. And everyone said, amen, amen, amen. Well, it is our time to worship through giving our tithes and offerings. And there are a few ways that you can do that. You can give online. Uh, at c3naz.net, that's C, the number three, N-A-Z dot N-E-T. Click on online giving and scroll down and it'll walk you through that process. It's safe, it's secure and quick. You can do that right now. Uh, The other way you can do that is to write a physical check or have one sent to our physical address, 5625 Oakland Drive, in Portage, Michigan. There'll be a slide at the end of the service that will allow you to write that down if you weren't able to get that right now. But God bless you and thank you as you give. Thank you for your faithful giving. you could join me today and join us here today. Uh, We had to do something a little different this week because we're doing our audio visual upgrade. And so thank you for all of you who have given towards that project and you can continue to give towards that project online. We had to record the worship section of our service Uh, earlier in the week. And so during that prayer time, uh, we kind of had a feeling like there might be something that has changed between Tuesday night and Sunday morning. And of course they have. So although you heard me pray uh, that Joni was home and recovering there, they did find a uh, fractured ankle. And so she's now in rehab uh, at Bronson Commons. And, uh, and many of you have been praying for Carol McCartney, and we want to continue to do that, who is in the hospital and 
may be having surgery today. As of recording time, they were looking at a possible um, surgery on Sunday. So keep praying for them uh, as you uh, go throughout your week this week. But I'm pleased. Normally, you invite me into your homes uh, while you have coffee or whatever and watch online. Today, I'm going to return the favor. So welcome to my home. I have my coffee, my Bible, and uh, I'm ready to preach sitting down today. I have it on good authority that Jesus uh, preached the Sermon on the Mount while he was sitting. And so we'll try this out at least for this week. And I'm glad that you're here today. Welcome to my little basement reading slash tool workshop area. Uh, my own little place carved out in the basement. Mm. Can't let go coffee go. Mm. All right. Well, if you have your Bibles, why don't you go ahead and open them to the Beatitudes, where we have been, and that is uh, Matthew chapter 5, and we'll begin at verse 1 and go right on through verse 12. So Matthew chapter 5, and we'll begin at verse 1. Uh, as you know, this whole series called The Upside Down Kingdom, uh, we are looking at very seriously that Jesus is our teacher. And so if Jesus is our teacher and we are his disciples, that means we need to know his teachings and we need to embody his teachings. That's what it means to be a disciple or to be a student of Jesus. We was, must remember who Jesus was speaking to on that occasion in order to better understand what Jesus was teaching. And so we looked at that and we, we saw that he was teaching crowds of people and four disciples. And in those crowds were all manner of people who were sick, diseased, wounded, paralyzed, demon-possessed, in constant pain. And uh, there were insiders from Jerusalem, uh, Jews, and there were non-Jews. There were Syrians and those from the Decapolis and those from beyond the Jordan. So it was quite a mix. And when Jesus sat down and opened his mouth, which remember was the phrase that says, when someone opens their mouth, it is they're speaking their heart and their soul. So we want to hear again and look deep at the heart and soul of who Jesus is. And so if you have your Bibles, let's read the Beatitudes, uh, Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you all when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of God for the people of God. And our response is, thanks be to God. Now, I don't know about you, but I like surprises. How many of you like surprises? You can do your little raising hand emoji uh, in the comment section if you like those. I want you to think for a moment about the greatest surprise that you have ever received. Could be anything. Could be a gift. Could be uh, your your child, you were surprised, you thought you were having a boy and it was a girl or a girl who was a boy, or you thought you were having one and you had two, um, or just the wonderful surprise to find out that you were going to be a parent, and, uh, and that's a beautiful surprise. 
Uh, you can list some of those in the comment section below. We're trying to be a little more interactive while we're having this online platform, but we hope to add some things that will begin to help us be more interactive together. But I remember mine, one of my greatest surprises in a, in a list of great surprises happened on my 17th Christmas. And, uh, you know, I had, that means I had just been driving for about a year at the time. And, uh, you know, my parents were really kind and good and they allowed me to drive their cars around and to, to get where I needed to go and all those kinds of things. But I didn't have my own vehicle. And my dad was really sneaky. He uh, even got my brother in on this when he casually asked my brother, you know, uh, you don't think Jeff thinks he's getting a car for Christmas, do you? Because we, we just really don't have the money. There's no way that we could do that. Knowing full well that my brother would run to me five minutes later and say, hey, I heard that uh, mom and dad can't get you a car. Are you okay with that? I think I remember telling him, yeah, that was, it's fine. They let me drive their car and I'll be okay. I, I get it. But little did I know that my dad was being very sneaky for he had purchased for $1,200 what would become like a Ferrari for me. I know it wasn't special to anybody else. It was a 1981 Toyota Tercel. I think everything in that was made of Naga hide on the interior. It had four gears, and it was, but it was all mine. He kept it a great secret. In fact, he even spent an extra $500 to get a new blue paint job on there, uh, and it was great. So I, here I was on, on Christmas Day, had no idea what was going to happen. And I'm opening gifts. We're opening our regular gifts. And my brothers were getting the things on their list. And, and I would open up a gift and get, like, T-shirts. I, I think I did get a sleeping bag that, that year. But they were getting all these things, and I, I, it just didn't make sense to me. I mean, I knew that Mom and Dad said, you know, they didn't have a lot of money. But it seemed like they were getting, and I, I wasn't. I was kind of felt like I was being left out. Well, the last gift was a tiny box, and you know how this story is going to go. I opened it up, and in that, I pulled out this little piece of plastic, and on it was a key. What a surprise. I couldn't believe the joy that was there. I, I went out, and I was able to see my car and to, to think about this beautiful surprise that I get to become a member of the car driving kingdom. I know that sounds strange, but you'll understand here in a second. I get to drive. I get to be one of those ones. I get to participate in the activity of a person who owns a car and has the freedom to drive that car around. Now, that's what it meant in the ancient days when people talked about a kingdom. It means getting to participate in the activity, in the rule and reign of God. Whenever Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven, he's talking about that active ruling, reigning of God. And I was getting to act in the kingdom of those who have cars. I was able to exercise that activity. And, and so we see this that what we have been reading about in as we've been reading the Beatitudes is that we get to see that it was a great surprise for the crowds to hear the Beatitudes that Jesus was announcing. Now remember, these were not a moral to-do list. These were surprise announcements at who gets to participate in the kingdom of heaven, in God's ruling, reigning, redemptive activity on earth. The surprise is that the people who are poor in spirit, those who are mourning, those who are meek, and who are starving for righteousness, they get included in this kingdom. Now, in the Roman culture of Jesus' day, this wouldn't have happened. In fact, philosophers and teachers, uh, they wrote whole training manuals to instruct young men about who to pick as the recipients of their favor or, or basically who to include. And you only want to include people who are going to enhance your status in society. In the Judaism of Jesus' day, those people that we have studied in the weeks past, they would not have been included either. In fact, you were probably, if you were in those situations, you had probably done something wrong. But Jesus surprises them by including them. 
these inf invitations are even more surprising in the, in the Beatitudes that we're going to study today. We're going to go through the rest of them today, and I want you to see the surprise of who's included. So let's dive in and see who is really there. In verse 7, we read, Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Now remember our word for blessing, makarioi. It means because of God's activity, they are being expanded. So we'll begin to see that all through this. Blessed are the merciful. And we think all about merciful. When we hear that word, we think, oh, that's so nice. We want people like that around us. I mean, they just kind of deserve to be in, right? Why is this a surprise? Again, we have to look at the surrounding Greek and Roman culture. To be indiscriminate for, for Romans, to be indiscriminate of who you give mercy to, like you just, you're just a merciful person. If you are just indiscriminate by who you give mercy to, it is a sign of a lack of judgment. To be merciful is to lack judgment for Roman culture. If, if we are truthful now, we still operate this way. We would probably not say blessed or the merciful. We would say, mm, I'm not sure that they're blessed because they're probably going to get taken advantage of if they just give out mercy over and over and over again. People are going to take advantage of that. But the word that Jesus uses there, elemones, we want to say that together, don't we? Elemones, ready? One, two, three, elemones. Let's try it one more time. One, two, three, elemones. Now, this can be translated to get into the skin of the other person, to see with their eyes, to think with their minds, to feel with their feelings. This is what it means to be merciful. You're not just throwing things out willy-nilly. It is you're really able to kind of get into the other person. We might use the word empathetic today. But there is a, an element of mercy. You know what's going on. And even though they have done something to wrong you, because you know them, because you're in their skin and you're seeing the world through their eyes, you are able to give mercy. Jesus is saying that people who are this way, that they're elemones, even though they might be taken advantage of in some instances, they, the Elimonas, are people who will understand the kingdom of God and are some of the first to get to enter it. And even though the Roman culture, the surrounding culture, would, would look down on them and say they're not worthy of judgment, they can't be trusted with power, Jesus says they're included. And they will, in fact, receive more mercy I mean, this shouldn't surprise us. This is what the kingdom looks like. Jesus is the proof of this, right? God getting into the skin of humanity in order to show mercy. What a surprise that was. Now, verse 8 goes on and says, Blessed are those who hunger and... Oh, I'm sorry, uh, verse 8. Blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they will see God. Now, we have to unpack this just a little bit. Uh, the heart, for us, is the seat of emotion. You know, I, she just has my heart. I, I just love her so much. But the heart for the Jews and Romans of that day is the seat of your thinking, of your intentions, and of your motives. In other words, what Jesus was saying is they have pure motives. And, and again, we're kind of tempted to say, oh, well, wonderful. We love people with pure motives. Why would they be excluded? In Roman culture, again, and really, honestly, in ours, we question motives of people all the time, and we're not always so sure that people have pure motives. And even if those people do have pure motives, we often think that pure type people or, or pure motives in a person is really a naive way to live. We might say that they just don't live in the real world or that they won't be able to do what needs to be done in this rough world that we live in. We don't trust them with authority. We want to push them to the margins and exclude them. It's another group who would have been looked down on on Jesus' day, and in some ways we still do that today. But, surprise, Jesus says that they are among the first invited into the kingdom. Jesus, in fact, says that they will be so in the kingdom that they will see God. 
They are so included that they get to see the one with the purest of motives for, uh, for all people, and that is God. Again, I want to pause right here before we go on to our next one to remind us that just like those who are poor in spirit or mourning, uh, these people who are merciful or pure in motives, they are not included because they are merciful or because their uh, motives are pure. This isn't an earning game. You can't earn your way into this kingdom. That's not the reason they are included. That Jesus is simply showing that in his upside down kingdom, a kingdom where ones who are exclu- that are in the world are excluded, those are the ones that are included first in God's kingdom. Jesus will say it this way in other places, the last shall be first. This is a kingdom principle. Okay, let's move on because the next one, verse 9 says, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called the children of God. Let's look at that, peacemakers. That word peace is the Greek word erene. Let's say that together. I know we've we've learned this one in the past, but let's say it together. One, two, three, erene. And Jesus, being a Jew, even though he may have used the word erene, would have in mind the Hebrew understanding of peace, which is the Hebrew word shalom. Why don't we say that together? It's really simple. One, two, three, shalom. And shalom as peace doesn't just mean the absence absence of conflict. Shalom means having everything we need to flourish. We might use the word wholeness. We have wholeness. When we have everything that we need for human flourishing, then usually conflict is set aside, and that means we have shalom. We have peace. So Jesus says the shalom makers are blessed, and they will be blessed uh, because they will be called the children of God, the one who is whole. So peacemaking is is wanting what is needed for human flourishing for as much of humanity as is humanly possible. Let me say that again. Peacemaking is wanting what is needed for human flourishing for as much of humanity as is humanly possible. This is dangerous work. Even if you truly want good for everyone, and there is a conflict, and you get in the middle to make peace, to give shalom, both sides usually wind up hating you for not taking their side. One example of this happened while I was on sabbatical. We were out, and we were uh, in the, actually in the redwoods, and we decided we would come into the small town that was there early. Matt and I, who were hanging out, our families were hanging out, we decided we'd go in and we'd get donuts, bagels, and coffee instead of trying to brew coffee on a on a campfire. So we did that and as we were getting there early in the morning we got out of the car and we were walking towards the small coffee shop when all of a sudden two women burst out of the door in a full on fight. I mean pulling hair, throwing punches, dragging to the ground. Matt and I without even thinking about it just dove into the middle of this. One, I, I grabbed one woman and Matt grabbed the other and we were pulling them apart and we got in between. I had to pry fingers out of hair and we were just standing in between holding them at bay from one another. And we were trying to get understanding of what was going on. We didn't think that we want, we didn't want them to be in conflict. I don't know that we were actually thinking, oh, we want human flourishing here, but, but we just reacted. And we began to try and calm them down. And they were pointing fingers at one another. And eventually it got to where they were trying to go at one another again through us. And we were in the midst. And we were being told to get out of the way and to mind our own business and all of these kinds of things. They hated us and were calling us names for not taking their side or not just minding our own business. We were able to send them on their own way. I don't know what we would have done if they were each 300-pound men or something like that, but we were able to send them on their ways. Um, We wanted peace. We wanted them to know. They hated us, 
But Jesus says that kind of instinct to make peace, to make sure that there's human flourishing for as much of humanity as humanly possible, that's a kingdom instinct. And even if our world does not appreciate it, it is a character of God's kingdom. And this God is the one who sent Jesus into the middle to take care of the greatest need for human flourishing, to defeat death in order that freedom could be given to all people. Do you see how this is a kingdom principle? And he was, Jesus was pierced on all sides and was killed while trying to be a peacemaker between people and between humanity and God. Which leads us right into our last grouping of people who seem excluded but are surprised that they are included in God's kingdom. And that is people who are persecuted. It says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you all when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. When we are persecuted, we don't feel included in anything. We wonder what we did wrong. We wonder if God cares. We get angry. We get confused. Especially the kind of Jesus, pers- the kind of persecution that Jesus is talking about here. Persecution for doing the right thing. And he's so clear about all the forms that persecution takes. I mean, when you look at verse 11... When they revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely, they tell lies about you, they persecute you, they drive you out. That's the literal meaning of the word persecute. There are insults that are hurled. And all because you want to be in right relationship with God and with people. That's what righteousness means. Or you're being persecuted because of Jesus. And think about this. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the righteousness of God. I want this to be clear because these declarations, these beatitudes, they all work together and they point us to Jesus because Jesus modeled these behaviors when he was with here. Jesus announced the kingdom and showed us the surprise of the kingdom life and who the kingdom includes. Jesus had mercy on poor on the poor in spirit. He had mercy on tax collectors and sinners. And what happened? He was persecuted and he was called a drunken and a, glut, a, a, a glutton and a drunkard. Jesus was a peacemaker when he brought an entire village of Samaritan outsiders back to the God who loved them. And then his motives were questioned by his own disciples. Jesus was restoring right relationships between God and humanity when he forgave the sins of a paralyzed man who was brought to him for healing. The result? He was called a blasphemer. He was pure in heart when he declared that he was, the, he was only doing the work that the Father had given to him. And they called him a heretic. They beat him. They whipped him. They despised him. They mocked him. They said all manner against him falsely. And they pressed him against a wooden cross and they nailed his hands and feet to it. They reviled him. Even as he hung there dying, they insulted him. And on the cross, Jesus wondered, had God forsaken him for including the poor in spirit, for comforting the mourners, for standing with the meek, for feeding the starving, the, for giving them the justice that they required, for being merciful, for being a peacemaker, for having pure motives, had God forsaken him? Yet he finishes by trusting in God's kingdom purposes by saying, into your hands, I commit my spirit. He says, I I trust that God is the God who includes all these forgotten people, so he will not forget me, his son. The insulters watched him die. He was laid in a tomb, and he stayed there for three days. But, surprise, 
of surprises. God's kingdom is proven victorious as Jesus comes out of the grave, conquering death and tearing down the dividing wall between humanity and God and all the walls that we've constructed between each other. He has dealt death the final blow so that now human flourishing can come to as much of humanity as is humanly or now divinely possible, proving once and for all that surprise, the people the world excludes are the very people that our God in includes. You and I have a place to belong. Why is this teaching so important? Because if you today have been excluded, I want you to know on great authority that Jesus says there is good news. There's a great surprise that God knows who you are. God knows your situation. God knows your makeup, your personality, and has made a way for you, yes you, even you, to be included. God in Christ is for the poor in spirit. God in Christ is here to comfort those who are mourning. God in Christ stands for the meek who need justice and need a voice. God in Christ feeds those who are hungry for justice, for righteousness, for right relationship, for the world to work the way it's supposed to work. God in Christ supplies those who are taken advantage of because they're merciful with more mercy. God in Christ shows himself to those who are excluded or discounted because of their mo their motives are pure or because they want to bring wholeness to the entire world, not just a small group. God in Christ stands with those who are being persecuted because they want the world to work the way God intended it to work. All human beings seen as God's image and worthy of dignity. This is what Jesus showed us. If you need inclusion, you have only to turn to him. And surprise, you will find a place to belong. Secondly, and this goes to those of us who consider Jesus our teacher and Lord. If we're his disciples, if we are his students, if we are seeking to embody his teaching in our lives, then we need to ask ourselves a question. When was the last time we actually asked Jesus, who can I include? Let me ask that again. When was the last time that you, actually ask Jesus, who can I include? I don't know if you know this, but there are still excluded people in this world. But if our teacher began by announcing God's kingdom to the excluded, don't you think that's what we should be doing? Don't you think that's who we should be seen as? We should be about this kind of work. Have you looked in your neighborhood, your town, your city, your workplace? Students, have you looked in your school for who is, in, who is excluded? God announced the great surprise of inclusion by sending Jesus. And Jesus turned around and said, Now, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you to go proclaim the good news, the surprise of who is included. Unfortunately, churches are now known more for who we exclude than for being known for the surprising people that we do include. Now, I know the question that always comes up when I start talking about this is, what about sin? Aren't they excluded because of sin? Now, let me ask you another question. Does Jesus teach about sin? I want to be clear about this. Absolutely, yes. We don't even get to leave this chapter, chapter 5, which we're going to get to before Jesus starts talking about sin and the need for repentance. Does Jesus teach a call, teach and call sinners to repent or to turn to God? Yes, absolutely. Of course he does. Were there sinners in the crowd that were there? Well, there were human beings, so I think the answer is yes, you bet. 
But that doesn't stop Jesus from beginning to announce the surprises of who God chooses to bless, who God chooses to include. Jesus knew something about human beings. Are you ready? They will never believe if they don't know that they belong. Human beings will never believe if they don't know that they belong. So are you willing to ask the question, God, who do I need to include? Who is God calling you to surprise? When was the last time you invited someone to church with you or even to join you online? This is really simple. Just send them the link. If you, if you really want to do something, just say, hey, we're in this series. Here's a link to, to the catch up and join me next week. It'll be great. This is what we are called to. Maybe some of us need to repent of excluding people. We're called to announce the great surprise of God's blessing, just like God surprised me, Jeff, by calling me, Jeff, by including me, Jeff, and to include you, whoever you are. God included you. These Beatitudes confront us with the question, are we really ready to mean what we sing every week? Are you ready? Are you ready to sing? Sing with me now. Hallelujah. You belong here in his presence safe and secure we see hope coming on the horizon there's no need for hiding because you belong let's pray god it's been so good to invite people into my home to study your word and to hear the great surprise that you included us and so, Father, we just pray right now that you would challenge us if we call ourselves your disciple. That you would include us. And you would help us to announce the surprise to others. Help us, God, to know your including presence. Help us, Father to take that including presence and go and include others. Challenge us, surprise us in our schools, in our workplaces, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, and in our cities to be known as people who include. Teach us your ways. Teach us your kingdom principles so that we can mean what we sing. For we pray this in the name of the great surprise of God, the name of Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to send you out. You've heard the noise of my home uh, here, to, here today. I'm glad you joined me, and I want to send you away from my home in blessing. And now may you know the great blessing of being included. May you know that there's a place for you in God's kingdom. May you know the God who includes. And may you know the joy of getting to announce to those around you that they are included. I pray that you would have the blessing of inviting someone to know Jesus. I pray that you will go and announce the good news of God's blessing to all those around you. And I pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. We'll see you next week back in the sanctuary, but thanks for coming today. Have a great afternoon.